when I started talking about solar and energy, uh, this was maybe seven years ago. There were very few panels installed. And when you talk about solar in Rochester, New York, they look at you as if you just came and have no idea where, what Rochester is. And uh, I would tell them, well, I've lived in Rochester 45 years, and I guess I've seen those winters. Uh, it happens to be that there is daylight in every place when the sun comes out. So the whole idea is how much daylight and how much sunlight, and it changes, and we'll cover some of that. But it's a great place to make power. The biggest uh, obstacle is first believing that it does make power and it will do the job. And then the second obst obstacle is all <clears throat> dollars and cents. Is it economical to do? Can you afford to do it? Can you afford to pay for it? How do you fund it? Uh, New York State is a unique scenario compared to other states in, you know, in, in America. We have probably the, one of the best programs to incentivize solar or renewable energy, I should say. So renewable energy is a lot more in the front as much as you hear about climate change. How many people believe that we are having some unusual weather for a few years? And if you believe the scientists, they'll say, well, we got something to do with that because we are emitting something in the air and we're changing the balance. And <clears throat> it happened to be that I was at a function last night. It was a dance drama. A, a group that came to India Community Center here in Penfield. And their whole theme was that nature has given us all these seasons. And if we disturb that cycle in some way, then God knows what we will be facing. And we may be seeing things today which could get a lot worse later. Now, individually, one person, one town, one solar system is not going to make the difference. But I think each person can say, make a commitment to say, I don't know, I'll do something which is reducing my footprint or I'm not using the gentleman asking about solar power powering system for a hybrid car. Okay, if you're not buying gasoline and not emitting that, there's a lot of carbon emissions. So there are things each one of us can do, and there are books and stuff that tells you how to go green. We call them go green. So there are lots of things we can do, but this is one of the uh, a solution or an option that we can take advantage where there is daylight. In, in our case, we assume about 1,100 hours in a year. So out of 8,760 hours that are there, if you could get daylight and some sunshine for 1,000 hours, these systems are designed on that basis. So Bob brought a, one of the panels, so I should introduce a silent guest here. That big panel there, <laughs> that's one of those solar panels you see in the pictures, you'll see on the slides. And he brought this, oh boy, it's heavy. This device, which takes the power, which is called direct current, DC, and makes it into AC. AC is the power you see being transmitted. But these systems make power. As the sunlight falls on it, there is energy in the light waves. And this technology, which is solid state chips, takes that energy, which is in the photo wave form, into an electric form, so it becomes a DC. So it's a converter that says, OK, you made all these kilowatt uh, of energy power. Let's send it to the point of use. Now, if you install it on the roof type top, it's much closer. And there are some scientists, people saying, well, why don't we just have DC lighting in the house? We don't have to change it if it is just on this location use. Why don't we just use it directly and not go through the conversion process? And some people who, are, who can do that, it can be done. But practically speaking, it makes sense. The technology is pretty reliable. And if you look at these uh, growth and technology markets, you're concerned about, would what I have become obsolete? This lady has a three-year-old panel. Uh, well, maybe they'll come up with a new model that will do a lot more. 
and then mine is an old model. It's just like our iPhones. <laughs> now there's model six or whatever, and mine is not there yet. Solar isn't happening that fast, but there are certainly a lot of improvements. The, what you will hear about as far as world leadership, and it sort of relates to the weather question. Can Rochester be a place for solar? Well, the leader in the solar applications is Germany. And they are higher location-wise at a worse weather condition than we have. And they are the leader in the world. Because these things are basically taking a very, as source of energy that's available all over, but it's available for a certain time. And they last a long time. It's like a piece of glass. It's all glass embedded. Now, 40 years after day one, if it was making one watt power, let's just give an example, maybe doing 0.9 watt power. Now, I, I know I wouldn't 40 years later be as energetic and whatnot. None of us are. Things slow down. But the technology is very sound. There are systems installed many years ago. So if a new model came that could make more power, smaller space, whatever, then not, not, nobody's stopping you from installing another set. And maybe by that time, more, more car companies will have electric cars that go two, 300 miles. Wouldn't you love to drive a Tesla? Now that happens to be the guy, the Tesla owner, Elon Musk, that is building the largest solar manufacturing factory in Buffalo, New York. <clears throat> Why Buffalo? Because New York has the best deal going on from grants point of view and funding point of view. And there are so many more options. Uh, six months ago, this option was not there. But now we have, there is an agency called New York Power Authority. So Niagara Falls Power, everything goes. And they give power. And in case of Fairport, which I happen to live there, they get the allocation called municipal power. So my electric bill is based on four cents a kilowatt hour. So when they ask me, do you have solar at your rooftop? I said, no, I can't get the grant because I'm not a taxpayer. So each one of you living in Penfield right now, we are paying a energy tax called SBC, Systems Benefit Charge. You've been paying it all these years and will continue to pay. Now, this is the money going into a fund which is managed by an agency called New York State Research and Development Authority, NYSERDA. So they get all this $400 million coming in. They can't spend it on anything other than energy. It's a restricted fund by law. So NYSERDA has got, they have a job of, we got to spend it because it's meant for those functions. So when you hear about the grants, they're really tax refunds for those who pay taxes. Now onto the apply and say, give me 30% of the cost so I can do something with whether it's energy conservation or in this case, solar generation. So anyone who is applying for solar funding from NYSERDA is actually getting that money back from the taxes that collectively we all paid. Now granted, not, you would not have paid $500,000 in taxes, but there are folks uh, communities who are applying for grants, and they're $2 million grants right from that fund. And if you look at the 10-year plan that the governor has in place, two years have gone by, eight more years, there's going to be about a billion and a half dollars worth of funds given back to the taxpayer or energy consumer in the form of grants. So this is your money, everybody who uses power, and pays systems benefit charge. I don't pay that because I'm in a municipal power. So eligibility is you must be a payer into the system. If you're not, sorry, we can't help you. So with that little bit of an initial background, yes, go ahead. Just a quick question. Your point of reference is four cents, per, sorry, four cents per kilowatt hour in Fairport, which is unique and very low. How much would we pay here in Penfield, for example, residential rate? Pro I thought I calculated about 11 and a half cents. You're there. Right. So yes. about three times that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wanted to have the point of reference. Thank you. 
Thanks. What I didn't tell you is in Fairport, they only have a quota system, so many kilowatt hours that the government gave them. So last winter, when, when everybody has sort of electric, we don't have gas service, so it's all electric homes. So everybody got a shock when January came in and you looked at the bill and you said, there is an extra zero here, what happened? Because they had to go out and buy from the market and transfer the cost what it was. It could be 15, 17, 20 cents. You got to pay, it's, we have only limited quantity. So while it's great, uh, I'm looking for a solution to change my heating system because there is nothing I can do about that except look for alternatives. But the cost was significantly higher, order of magnitude higher. So every place has its plus and minus. You live in a beautiful town a very progressive town looking at environment. You have had workshops. So it's, it's good to be able to see interested people coming in looking for better things to come in the future. So I'm gonna share you with you about uh, 20 some slides. Stop me if there is any question in, in, on the slide itself. And I think we have probably an hour to spend, uh, which, 40 minutes or 20 minutes have already gone. So uh, keep it informal or uh, in a way that uh, that way I'm able to answer those questions that you raised. And uh, my colleague here, Ben, wrote down just so that I can keep looking at it and say, did we cover that or not? So with that, let's see if we can just. We, we are uh, located in. Uh, Henrietta, or Brighton, I should say, Henrietta Town Line Road. And that's where our office is. So it's a company that in 69 I came and joined. Uh, I, actually, I came to Clarkson College of Technology to study environmental engineering from India. And nobody had told me that Clarkson College is in Potsdam, and Potsdam it gets cold. <laughs> I mean, here I am, I've never seen snow. And I end up here in September, and the graduate advisor says, so you brought your winter clothing and all that? I say, yeah, I have sweaters and things. <laughs> Do you know how cold it gets here? I say, no. It's it minus 40 sometimes. Ah, it can be minus. How can temperature be minus? <laughs> so I've come a long way training for weather. <laughs> but. Larson is, uh, since 1955, uh, enjoyed working, and this green technology is keeping me going because there is a lot at stake. I have a grandson, and I look at him, and I say, okay, 20, 30 years later, what is this person going to see? And what did we do to hopefully slow down and do something about it? We may not be able to, but at least make our part. So the good news is there is green of two kinds of green. One is going green is good for the environment, all that. But the other green is what you asked about, ROI, return on investment. Is it a good investment? How much does it cost? And if you look at the uh, life cycle perspective, imagine any power plant, whether it's coal or Guinea or whatever, when they are building a power plant, do you build it for five years? No. You build it for 50, 100 years. And you go for long, long-term financing, like municipal infrastructure. If the town wanted to build a sports facility, whatever, for public, they're looking for 15, 20-year bonds. So things which last long time and things where you're sure you're going to use it, energy you can't live without it, that's our life, needs to be looked at from a longer perspective. So my slides, I'm showing you, we're looking at 30-plus years because... Imagine if you could make every kilowatt hour that you consume yourself with your own system, and it's going to last longer uh, than the warranty. Warranty is 25 years, so 30, 40 years. Then you could say, well, it doesn't matter how much power cost in 2015 or 2020 or 30. It could be 50 cents a kilowatt hour. I'm making the same amount that I'm consuming. Therefore, it doesn't matter. That is called net zero. I'm making as much as I use in my own system, I own it. And there are 
benefits and things that the government gives you to take advantage of to have the incentives. Okay, let's just go here. So in the beginning, there are a bunch of slides that show some projects which go seven, eight years old, but these are the municipalities, village of Medina in Orleans County, Alba, Genesee County, Lyons and Wayne and Williamson. These are communities that were able to get some grants to do, we call it sustainability planning, and essentially sit down and go through ideas and what can you do, and energy was certainly an issue and they were able to take advantage of some of the funding. Everybody probably here heard about stimulus package. So this was stimulus package funding. They were looking for projects that are sustainable, that make a difference to the community. So they were lucky to apply for, used to be called GIGP, Green Infrastructure Program Grant. So these projects are, just to give you some example, uh, this is what the New York State is looking at. And I, I think I've talked about the New York State program. And then this is what the big ones look like. You can see the rows and rows of large size. This is the larger scale type of installation. This is what we are building right now on a landfill in town of Williamson. Williamson had a town dump that was closed 20 years ago. There's nothing you can build on top of it. It's always gonna be a closed landfill. Happened to be an industrial park so the first project was a smaller project, but now they are building it. And by Thanksgiving, it should be ready. So imagine a 1.4 megawatt. This is a fairly large size system that is being constructed, will be completed. So the supervisor could say, as the new year comes, we are net zero. We make as much power as we as a community buildings consume. And that is the goal for all the communities, including Penfield, let's take steps to get there. Yes? So the benefits of that power will be attributed to the citizens in Williamson? No, no. This is for them to take care of their own government need. They have, they're using that much power? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, because you, they, have a, they have a water treatment plant. They have a wastewater treatment plant. That sort of adds to the to requirement. But they are setting this stage for community folks to also take advantage. They are also paying the same SBC charge. And once the questions are answered, is it affordable? Uh, is it a good time? How do I justify it? Then you can take this step yourself and do the same thing, as long as you have south facing roof or land available that doesn't have any shade. Because if it is shaded, it even gets worse than, yeah. Are you going to talk a little bit about the process? Our neighbors just had a photovoltaic system put in. And you know they shared with us that there was a process. You had to have your house surveyed yes, and yes. a siding. Are you going to talk about? Yep. OK, thank you. Yep. Thanks, Sabrina. So let's just look at some pictures. So the idea behind this whole, and my presentation is more first the town level, then bring it down to what your individual, so we can sort of mix it here. But the idea here for the town and energy independence or net zero, sorry, is that we need to look at first conserving energy. So look at all the buildings there are. Why make power to for wasting it? So make sure you have changed the light bulbs, control sensors. So step one is knowing what you consume and then step two is making the power. And you can make it depending upon the sites, what technology is more appropriate. And then the new law that state has, the remote net metering, wasn't there two years ago. But new law called remote net metering allows you to do the power generation remotely. Because it's possible a town, in this case, town didn't have any building or parcel where you could put five, six acres of solar panels. Landfill was. So now it's being made remotely. So by doing the power generation somewhere else and then uh, I'll show you the next slide shows the, so this would be an example of wastewater plant they have, they need some pumping, some facilities. In this, in this case, they are not supplying to manufacturing, but if the town owned or village owned a, a industrial park and supplied power to them, just like water, sewer facility, then that consumption could also be produced somewhere else. So you look at the buildings and facilities 
all it is saying is that one place you can have a host site to make as much power. And there are systems now going in in federal government which are 30, 40, 50 acres in size. Huge, huge farms because they all can make power. And the good part is it's required to put in the grid. You know, there were questions about batteries or storing power. If the law did not allow or require you to connect to the grid, then what do you do at night? It made the power during the day, you need the power. The so grid allows the consumers to draw whenever they want. Grid allows the producer to put it in the grid whenever it's available as a power. So basically you have a system of wires and, and transformers that bring power to you. So before we go see the pictures of the thing, these are the steps that they were uh, able to go through. How much we consume, what can we do to reduce the consumption, figure out how much you need. So for a typical home, you might say, well, we need 5,000 kilowatt hours, just to pick up a number. That means you got to make 5,000 kilowatt hours over the year. Every month and day would be different, but as long as you clock 5,000 hours, you are there. So you look at how do I make that power? And if you were living in top of the hills in Wyoming counties or some areas here, lots of uh, wind and neighbors who don't object to you putting a windmill, those are two very big ifs. Uh, if that's not the case, then you're not gonna be able to get the permits and put anything which sticks that high. Uh, there are windmills and there were people who were making this nice flower looking windmills. Uh, sort of went out of business because they looked nice, but they were not high enough, and they didn't get enough power production. You gotta be 200, 300 feet up in the air. And higher you go, farther people can see it. But solar is ground mounted or ceiling or roof mounted, so that's not an, as much of an issue. Uh, this is roughly the hours uh, that we use for calculation. The grants are important, and then long-term financing is important. This is not something that you say, I put a dollar in, I'll get it back in two years. If it was, maybe someday it will be, it will, everybody will be doing it without grants. But this is what the grants force folks are predicting, that within 10 years, you won't need the grants. Because what's happening is, the cost of power is going up to two, three percent every year, and 12 cents now, it could be 17, 18 cents. Manhattan, right now, it is that price. People in New York City pay that kind of stuff. The solar panel there over there costs 70, 60, 60% more because the labor to install and all that stuff. Everything is expensive in New York City. So the cost is going down uh, for the total installation and the electrical power cost is going up from the utility point of view. So somewhere you can see that one will be able to have a system which has a long life and produce power for you. And when you reach this point where you're making as many kilowatt hours as you consume, then it doesn't matter. And there are a few friends of mine who've gone through, calculated, put it in, and say, okay, we're done. One of the questions that comes up about, this could be an investment of in thousands of dollars, $10,000, $15,000 as a total cost. Well, when that is added to a building, does it become taxable? Would my property now be worth that much more? The law for the power generation allows exemption for that. So you may have a, achieve a house that is totally self-sufficient and its value goes up because you don't have to worry about energy costs, your assessment doesn't change because of the solar. That's one uh, area that they, have, they want to incentivize. Uh, it may go up for other reasons, but the fact you put solar panel, it doesn't. So this is a trip to Medina, it's Orleans County, and this is a, a waste treatment plant. This, this stands for wastewater treatment plant. And what you see here is roof mounted, different designs here. This whole roof is pitching that way, so it, it could be all used. This, the inside is the waste treatment equipment. So Medi Medina has this at the treatment plant, at the town highway garage, same thing they built. 
And now they have an application to build that at a compost building, a full size, equaling all of their usage. So they are waiting to, sub to apply and, and be able to do that in Medina. Uh, this is in Lyons, New York here. You can see a couple of rows. Here you see Williamson. Uh, this is at the treatment plant. They have a 50 kilowatt if you go on Ridge Road, uh, 401, uh, no, 104. It's right at the town hall and town library, right in the front. And they have a display inside the lobby. You can see how much power it's making. You can go to the website and see exactly how much power it makes as the clouds move. Winter. This is Elba, so small system here. But these things get warm, the energy from the solar, so that color and that the way the system is producing power, that surface where there is a snow contact gets warmer. And because of the angle, sorry, it, it sort of sloughs off the snow. So you can, on natural basis, see this happening uh, just because of the slope. And those who have it on roof, you can experience it yourself. But even during the cloudy days, you can see the production you can see the changes in production based on how much solar energy falls on it. Obviously, sunny day is the best. But this is another factor. These panels like cold. If you use the laptop in your and sit and work on it, it gets pretty hot. It has a fan inside it. These chips need to be cooled. We happen to have the weather which keeps it cool. We happen to have a lot of precipitation, rainfall, snow that keeps it clean. Imagine being in Texas with a sandstorm or something and it's all covered with sand. Who's gonna remove the sand? It's, it's self-cleaning. So we have some disadvantage, but we have advantages because we have enough water. We have enough uh, good weather conditions to make efficient power. Uh, this slide just shows uh, angles that you have to do with the sun's point of view, it shows you got to maintain a distance because you don't want the shade from this falling on this panel. So you, there has to be a layout knowing where we are. And there are designs available that you can have the panel follow the sun. So they have a automatic control that moves it. But in our weather condition, that's the part which you can't rely on, that stuff which allows the bearing to move. So. We prefer to take a little bit less power, but let it be fixed and not worry about that. Now, the reasons why would you do or consider, uh, we just listed some of them. You have energy cost. How do you stabilize the cost? How do you make sure that the cost in future isn't going to go up with no control on your hands? And then this is the second reason we talked about systems benefit charge. You've been paying for it. The grant comes from that. Why not get it back? Maintenance is very minimal. There is no moving part in these systems. The part that could need maintenance may be the inverter that converts that. And these things are also warranted 10, 15 years, depending upon the manufacturer. So it's not like you will need to worry about every six months what to fix or repair. Uh, payback right now is about six years with the grants and incentives. Uh, when, and we'll go through that. It used to be much longer because five years ago, the cost of solar panel was a lot more. There has been a reduction of almost 75% drop in price. That's like a big sale at Christmas time. And it's come down because of the production have gone up there are very, very large-scale plans being made. Uh, China announced building these gigawatts. This is a big, big size. Just to give you an idea, a nuclear power plant would be one gigawatt, let's just say. Uh, within one year, in the United States, we have built six equivalent nuclear power plants just by building solar PV. Now you try to build one nuclear power, real nuclear power plant, it'll take you 20 years if you could get the permit. But it's clean technology, it's ground mounted, and it's really growing very, very fast as, a, as an application. 
Uh, this last one is more about the climate change and global warming issue, that we really need to switch to clean technology and switching to electric cars, switching to less polluting cars. It could be even a compressed natural gas. CNG is a great option for big trucks, and Waste Management Inc. has converted all their trucks. The garbage trucks now run on CNG. It happens to be they have a lot of gas coming out of landfills. If you clean it and compress it, that's your fuel. So you could run your trucks based on biogas coming out of a landfill, and they're doing it. It's not a thought. It's actually happening. So in future, with transportation going green with cleaner fuels and communities, buildings where we live, where we have all the facilities, spend all our time, doing something like that are two ways that we don't have to buy as much oil. Isn't it great that oil prices went down? I filled the gas I was traveling 301 or 302 in New Jersey. And I'm sure somewhere there is 299. So it's great. Why is it great? Because we're not buying as much. Well, why don't we just not buy more of that stuff and keep it there? It's not going to go down to zero, but why not control the cost of that energy? So we have sort of covered this. Uh, I would say, yes, it will work. We are better than the conditions in Germany, and we have a great incentive uh, from the state to go solar. Uh, and we'll discuss this incentives. The project financing, we will discuss a little bit later some of that. Uh, funding is available. Uh, the energy output is basically the production is put into the grid. That's how you, you don't put it into a battery and then use it later. Although someday the battery cost is coming down. We just saw very, very large scale development and companies improving this life of the battery. Uh, and so within our lifetime, hopefully you will be able to see some usage to have in your home. So right now, if there was a power failure, the government requires you to have controls to shut it off. Your solar system has to be shut off if there was a power failure. That's a safety device. Even if it is nice sunny day and you, have no, you didn't have a shutdown, it's simply because if there is a power shutdown, they send the people to go and fix it. And if you're making power put in the grid, some poor person will get electrocuted, and that's not a good thing. But if you had a system where you could store your power, then the electronics will say, all right, don't go over there, go here. Charge me my solar cells. So someday you will see the hybrids and they're calling them microgrids will be coming. Uh, as far as health impacts, uh, you know, it's very, you, can, you should go to some sites where they have stand around. It's not like, oh, this windmill makes a lot of noise or it kills the birds and all the other issues or aesthetics. Uh, so these are things which are much lower value uh, there was a question about what do you do after the useful life? These solar panels after 40 years making, let's say, 90% of the power. It doesn't stop making it, so it could continue till it stops making it, but it's a piece of glass. This is a similar disposal issue that will be a glass window has to be disposed of. Most of these things are still in working scenario. Some parts, wiring stuff has longer life, so you may replace with newer panels. But there is no recycling, or, although there are valuable metals in there, but someday you will have industry which takes it apart and takes the silver out of it and copper out of it. Uh, this end of life impacts, there are issues. Uh, most of these projects, large scale, the developer will say, after it's done, we'll take it out. It's in the contract for large scale. We will remove it. And now they are installing this using ground screws that are just large, giant screws put in. You put the panels. When you're done, you unscrew it, take it out. All you have is a four to six inch hole every so feet apart. So it's modular. It can be put in. It can be taken out. It's not an issue that you have a major cost. Uh, as far as who's taking advantage of it, a lot of folks have gone through, and the number of installations are much, much higher in the last year, last two years. So this is just to give you an idea of cloudy days. 
Uh, we have 55%. And these are some cities up which are equally cloudy or a little bit uh, more cloudy. But we are up here, 55, 56%. And it does make power when it is cloudy because occasionally the clouds move and sun comes and it makes more power. Uh, this is something that is giving you idea of connected load. So the curve is just saying how in last year, few years, 10 years, or let's say, but you can see the slope of this curve is going up. And it's simply because there are lots of funds available. And the second part is the federal tax credit. Those folks filing for tax returns for individuals, not for the town of Penfield, they don't file tax refund, but individuals living, paying taxes can get federal tax credit on top of it till 2016. So hopefully it will be extended, but right now there is a window, there is a possibility that those tax credit the federal government gives will expire. And if that happens, those who did it when it was still available won't have to worry about it. But I would say most likely because we are going towards cleaner energy, that will be continued. But be aware that NYSERDA funding is get available for 10 years. The federal tax credit, which is 30%. So just add those two 30%, close to 60% of that a dollar worth of panel is covered by either upfront grant from NYSERDA or when you file the taxes in the following year, you get that tax refund that tax credit, I should say. So those two are great incentives because now you're left with 40% of the cost. And some businesses, some folks can then take, they call it rapid depreciation, depreciate it and write it off as a tax. So there are about 70% of the funds are incentives if you are in the right financial situation that you can take advantage of it. So what you're really paying for is the 30% over the long run. Go ahead, sir. Is the NYSERDA grant before the federal tax credit or after it or vice versa? It's is the before. federal tax credit? It's before. Before the grant? Yeah. So it's not you're out of pocket. That's it's right. the cost of the system. You, you will pay 70 cents to the installer. Okay. It's supposed to be passed on to the consumer. But federal tax credit is, goes to the owner not the user. And we'll see how that, uh, some cases, makes sense. So, so is the federal tax credit on what I pay out of pocket for the system? Total. Total. Under the dollar. Total cost. You get tax credit on the nicer grant. OK, good. Yeah. Uh, this is the curve, just basically to make a point that recent years, there is an increase, and there is a reason for it. It's becoming more affordable. There are more grants. and. Uh, some people will do it for long-term solution, green solution, uh, their own beliefs for sustainability. Uh, this is the program now. The word PAN means Program Opportunity Notice. So they published this, and the numbers change. But this used to be the number uh, as of this cycle, which was just decided this summer for large scale solars, 2589, which is go from 200 kilowatts to 2000 kilowatts, two megawatts. Now, just to give a perspective, a typical home may be five kilowatts. So 200 is like you have 40 homes uh, in your neighborhood, they probably are 200 kW. They're talking about communities where are subdivisions forming community solar, and someday it may happen that this is happening more in conversations in California where a lot of these things. Why couldn't the neighborhood people, they're homeowners associations. So let's say we have 15 homes. We are managed through the association. Association pays all the electric bills. Why can't we put the panel somewhere, lease a piece of land, put it in, take it for us as a group? So it may happen, but not now as of now. Uh, the net zero concept I basically described before, that you really want to shoot for making as much power as you consume. And by, and say everyone wins, you know, wins. The question is, wow, well, if, if this all happens, then what would these power companies do? If we all make our own power, what would happen to RG&E? Well, fortunately, uh, 
they are, the demand is going up faster than the installation of these panels. So they still have to make more power to meet the demand. All the data centers, all the information is just going up and up, more technology. So, and the second reason is they only agreed to buy solar or green power up to a certain percentage of what they sell. So the quota system, the way it is now, is 3%. So everything we talked about, once you cross the 3%, they can say, no more solar power in my grid. I've reached my limit. And the original limit was 1.5%, which was raised either last year or year before that to 3%. Chances are it will be raised higher and higher because there are some states where there is no limit. You make as much power, put it in, and the utility. Now think about when does this solar panel make most power? Probably the summer, right? July, August, really hot, 95, 800 degrees. Well, that happens to be the time when we turn the air conditioning on. That happens to be the time where the power is the most expensive and they can't meet it. In some cases, they have to shut down the areas to be able to. Because in an electrical system without storage, you got to equal the demand all the time. The moment sun comes out and your solar panel starts moving power, somewhere, somebody is producing that much less automatically just to have the balance. So this whole grid system depends on that. So power company wins. Because they're buying power at 15, 17, 18 cents at that time per kilowatt hour. And here is solar panel giving them that in a, in a much lower cost. So the whole idea of sustainability or going green, everybody benefits. And I think we need to look at our own situation and make decisions for our own consumption. Uh, go back. This we have covered, so I'm not going to throw 30% about the systems benefit charge, this is the federal tax. You gotta be paying taxes to get this. So nonprofits, town governments, municipalities don't get that benefit, but they are able to take benefit in some other way. Uh, developers, these are the folks, you know, we talk about so many people are there to install. Uh, there is a list of approved developers or installers that the state keeps. The money is given not to you directly, it's given to a selected developer who will submit the application on your behalf, the consumer's behalf. So one me, me wants to make sure that these developers are approved. And some of them have private funders, people who have tax write-off opportunities, say, I will put the money, put that solar in my name so I can take the tax credit because the nonprofit group is not going to make use of anyway. And expectation is that you will get some benefit of that tax credit by being a user, and that's the part you negotiate with the installer. But most of these PPAs are not for small size installations. In California, there is a company, Solar City. Give me your roof, I'll put it up. You asked about renting the system. Why doesn't the power company do that? Well, power company isn't doing it, but there are private investors who have the money, who know for sure sun is not going anywhere. They know that this thing is going to last 40 years. Tax benefits are here, and I can get my money back. Willing to invest and own your generation system if you buy the power from them. Every kilowatt hour they make, if you buy it, sign the agreement, they'll put up the money because it's a great investment for them they can take all these benefits. So those are called power, sorry, power purchase agreements right here. The financing, this is new. These two entities, uh, previous uh, six months ago or before, if the town wanted to build a system, they have a choice of going out, borrowing your own money and build it. Or if they didn't want to take the risk and said, well, we want to buy it later, then these private companies, the developers, will offer a power purchase agreement or the term of the contract, and the town could have them spend the money and buy it later at a reduced price. But now we have New York State Power Authority and the Association County have a mega program. Both of them have funds meant for nonprofits and municipalities. So NIPA is ready to give, uh, and we talked about 
if you're gonna build a power plant, have a long life and long term to return it. They have money available up to 30, 40 years to pay back, equaling the life of the system. What that does is if you're gonna make the payment on a 30-year loan versus five-year loan, your payment is a lot less. And if you look at that payment you're making to the utility, to the lender, in this case a public lender, NIPA, what they have done is raised about $75 million from Bank of America and First Niagara Bank. They were the two banks that competed to buy their bonds. And they won, and now they have the money saying, okay, anybody wants it, we will apply, we'll give you long-term loan. Why? Because then your monthly payment will be lower. Convert it to cost per kilowatt hour, you may be making power for seven, eight cents. And if you're buying for 12, why wouldn't you do that? It's your money, government agency. So these are new options for financing that are available. They also have for residential customers, for anyone here in the room, they're under NYSERDA program, they will look at it, and if you type in on-bill financing on the computer, what it means is that the NYSERDA will look at the, your cost after the grant and ask the power company to, f to finance that and put that charge on your bill. So just the way you buy the power, it will have a line item saying, here is the installment for that seven, they don't give you 20 year, but they'll give you long enough that your total payment is still the same. Because now you're making power, depending upon the month and whatnot, but over the year, it balances out and you're paying for it over term of, let's say seven years. Now you can afford to get it done because you're, lo you're paying it now anyway. The payment becomes in two kind of parts. So that on-bill financing is for residential, available in New York State, it requires, the process is you need to get an audit done, which is also free. Uh, auditor will come and check the light bulbs and say, how much power do you consume? Because you probably have never sat down and added all the 12 months. You say, oh, bill comes and you pay. But they will do that. They keep track of it. They'll look at the windows. They'll look at all the insulation, give you ideas. Within that are electrical measures. What do you do? Well. There is a room sensor that you can put in that shuts the thing off. And in homes, we always have this, you tell your son or daughter, shut the light off, and they'll forget, or somebody is nagging somebody, say, why did you turn the light off? Because those who are conscious say, why is the light on, there's nobody in the room, like me. But if there is a sensor which says, there's no motion, shut it off, you're done, once. Or you go to an office space, sun is out, windows are open, all the lights, are still on and there is enough light without that. The person sitting would not even notice that. But if there was an optical sensor measuring lumens, it will slowly dim it down and as the clouds come, bring it up automatically. So these are the things, if you get them done once, pay for it over seven years, are now affordable because it's a payment plan. It's just like cars. Brand new, you can't buy the big loan, lease it, then buy it after the driving it for three years lease. So these are all different financing methods that you can use. Uh, this uh, sort of covers the idea of power purchase agreement. And I want you to notice this green area. This is the dollar saved by the customer by installing the system. So year one, here, oops, we're showing that there's 12 cents a kilowatt hour is the current utility rate. 11.3 cents is the rate for 15 years. And then it's 10.8 after 16 to 20. So 20 years later, the power purchase agreement ends. And you still have life after that. And you're making power for 3 cents a kilowatt hour. So the savings, and what is this line here? That's the line which represents if it didn't do anything, what will happen to the cost of power? It will keep going up. 3% and someday will be much higher. So your electric bill, 40,000 today, could be $80,000 uh, at, at the end of 30 years. So you're avoiding this cost going up by controlling the cost, whether it's a term loan or whatever arrangement, for the years, and then it comes down. So these are the savings, and here is a savings 
of half a million dollars over this life cycle. And these are the savings at net, net present worth value. So if you took all the future savings, brought it today, this action will result in saving over 30 years for a 350 kilowatt system. But the concept is the same. You save in the beginning, you control the cost of power, and when you paid off, then it's making power and you, it's just barely anything because your cost of maintenance is very, very low. So this thing is 30 years, life of the solar panel goes another 10 years as far as the expectation. And this is just a, giving an example of what the town of Penn feels. One of the option is, is looking at the Jackson Road uh, trans, you know, DPW facility. And there's land available, and we went through some consumption just to give you an idea about 1.4 uh, kil million kilowatt hours. So that's about the same size as the town of Williamson, one big project that's a little bigger. But you need a lot of land for that. So we are looking at, okay, these are the rates, this is the cost for the power, uh, the DPW itself is consuming this much, and you can build a different size system, it will offset different percentages. So it's all a question of, once you know how much power you have to make, where can we make it? And the most important question about the large cycle projects, a large scale project is, there has to be wires big enough to take the power. We just can't go and get a piece of land and there is a single phase power and you call the utility and say, oh no, no problem, we'll bring the power, it'll only cost you 500,000 to bring the power line to take your power. And that totally takes away the economics of it. So the panels have to be on a street where there is a good size uh, system available. So that was the last slide. We are ready for discussion, questions. Ram? Yep. Th First of all, thank you. It seems like that the business case today is compelling enough that there would be a rush to do this. The examples that you shared were with smaller communities and the like. Can you explain where we are kind of right now? Um, you know, New York is incentivizing these, this kind of, these kind of programs, but why isn't there a, a pretty significant rush to, to adopt and to embrace? I think it's just a question of it's a new thing. In their mind, they don't believe it works, folks, or the decision is made at higher level some other way in headquarters, and they need to be convinced that it's going on. What is making a difference is when Bosch and Lam says, we're gonna put acres of solar panel on the rooftop. When companies, the, uh, your drugstores, Walgreens putting it, Walmart putting solar panel. Walmart is not putting solar panel because they are very kind-hearted, uh, sus you know, sustainable company. They are a good business to make money and putting solar systems, recycling, rainwater, all those green things they are doing is strictly is the green which is on the bottom line of a financial statement. It happens to be all of those things also help the environment. So when companies like that start putting and going net zero, and the government grants people realize, hey, it will be gone, the tax credit may be gone, then there will be a rush and you wait in line and get it done. But it's more individually, personally believing it. Nobody wants to make a mistake. And they're scared if I did it and it's wrong, people will laugh at me. So they want to see neighbors, oh, how is your system? Gee, I, we have a, Pete Dedeck is one of our uh, employees working with us, his home. He's net producer, he's happy, he's giving more power to them, doesn't ever have to worry about it, but he's watching on, uh, all the time. So th more installations will make a difference and every town and village which goes ahead and when Williamson makes a big announcement next year, Wayne County community will say, well, they did it, why can't we do it? It's the same thing. So more will be happening and that curve I showed will be going up and I hope it does because that's, it, it's really a no-brainer with the dollars that they are doing it and the cost is coming down. There are lots of competition, a lot of companies. If you talk to them, they say, we are very busy. Sorry, I don't mean to be the only one to ask questions, but I'm terribly interested about this. So, so the 
for a residential customer, the process, you would reach out to one of these New York State certified installers. They would come out and do a site survey. And I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, no. Could you walk us through that? Uh, yeah. What you do is first uh, the decision, yeah, let's find out what can we do about it. There are certified auditing companies, energy auditing companies, and most of the electrical mechanical companies do audits. Ask them to do your audit if it has not been done. Because that is the documentation that shows NYSERDA what's your consumption. They don't want to overpay you. I said, let's just make double the power. Who knows? They want to see your bills. So ask them to do it. It will be very nominal, maybe 100 bucks or nothing. Get the audit done. The report tells you what is your consumption. Then you look at the pages, ask the neighbors who are the local installers. And there are companies that are local that install these systems. These are your neighbors. Once you know what size it is, say, here is my consumption. Here is my address. They don't have to necessarily come all the way. If uh, They can initially look at the Google Maps, and they can look at your house in north, south, east, west, come up with some idea. Then they come and give you, and you can decide who you want to do business with. They'll do the application, paperwork, and that stuff for you and install it. So, Ram, I have, we've lived in our home for 28 years, and I have every month of my RG&E kilowatt and therms usage. Do I still need to have an audit, or can I just move forward and say, hey, I know I have documented my usage, or do you still have to have the audit done? It would be good because it's free. It's, yeah. it's good to have it because you, you may get ideas that you didn't have. But you can provide the copies of the bills and supporting, and directly uh, they want to know that you are not wasting that solar so that you have done energy efficiency. So you may have to show that. You don't have those old bulbs that last a few months and then consume 80% more power. So once we get past that phase, the, oh, sorry. <laughs> so once we get past the audit and, and they say your conservation level, your siting is good, what's the next steps then? Do, is there, you said there's an application process which the developer does for yeah, you? Yeah, you and call the companies that do it in Rochester, they're listed there. You can go to a website for NYSERDA, they have all the companies that are approved, their name and address. You can decide, oh, this person is in Penfield. Well, let's check them out. They're close by. So you decide who to call, to, uh, it's up to you. Uh, and then look at the price, uh, what the total cost is, how long will it take to do it. And then you sign an agreement. And then this company will do the paperwork, uh, go through the installation, ordering materials, make sure that the, you know, if it is 25 years warranty, the company that makes it has been established business that will be there. So you want to buy from known US-made established companies. If you are going to own it, if you are going to the power purchase agreement, then the person investing the dollar there would be doing it. So they will come and do the proposal. You, you, and it has those projections, how many kilowatt hours it will make, and what is your bill and justification ROI type of stuff. And then you sit down on the table and make a decision. They will make the application. You need to go for the financing, fill the forms for on-bill financing, get the dollars lined up. If you can get term loan from RG&E and NYSEG, why not? So are you seeing a movement for residential customers? Mm -hmm. Like I said, one of our neighbors did it. And you know, I asked them a few questions, and they were somewhat uninformed. They did it because they just thought it was the right thing to do instead of you know, the business case yeah. justifying it. You know, in my mind, I want to see what the return on investment is, where the break-even point right. is. They will help me that, yes. you know, project that forward, correct? Correct. They, that's exactly what they have. Now they have websites. You know, you can, anything you can buy in Amazon type, they're <laughs> websites. You can put in your consumption, and somebody will call you from some city, some place. Uh, we will build it for you. Okay. So there are lots of tools, but work with local. Keep the money local. And that way, if there is a help needed, somebody will be there to help you out, not coming from California. Thank you, Ram. All right. Thanks, You talk about getting an audit, but let's say a person wants to build a system larger than what he would really need to supply for his home. 
because he felt it was the right thing to do or he just had the money and just figured I'm just going to do it for kicks and giggles, if you will. But um, what is uh, the issue relative to building a bigger system than what you really use? Do you, do you lose yeah. the credits, you know, like the federal credit, because you build it bigger than what your usage would be? No, the program that the utility agreed with the Powers Public Service Commission is that you will not fund more than 110% of your current usage. So they allow for growth. They don't want consumer to become a competitor of the power supplier. So rg won't like it. <laughs> All right, and like if you were to quote, take an average home, if you will, do you have a number you would throw out that you know, a system would cost 5,000, 10,000, or 20,000, you know, just to give people here, you know, an idea, because I think Larson was just involved in a system that was just put in in East Penfield. I might be wrong on that, but, um, and I think the system was, in my mind, probably built bigger than may have, may have been needed, but. Yeah, well, the, the cost is, is dependent on how, what big, how big it is. For the residential market, the prices have come down from five years ago significantly, but you are looking at probably more closer to three dollars plus per watt. So if it is five thousand watts times three is fifteen thousand bucks. But it used to be eight dollars a watt, and we have some systems we showed you which were eight dollars a watt, because that was the cost at that time, install cost. If it was a huge system, there are developers, solar developers, saying, "Oh, I can build it for two bucks." For what? But they are huge. They have our neighbors, they had a, approximately thirty thousand dollars investment, and they paid about. Oh, geez, sorry, sorry. About fifteen k was the number that they figured they pay for it after the tax credits. Right. Okay. I think the other interesting thing is, you know, there is a system that I've been told that's been in existence for over ten years where they do use um, forklift batteries for storage, you know, of electricity, and. Uh, also, probably a year ago, I received a prospectus, you know, for a solar system to be built on over 100 acres of my property, which I virtually threw in the trash can when you looked at the dollars they offered. <laughs> well, if the property you want to lease to somebody, there are people who are interested. But find the property which you will not have any other higher value use. There may be land which is flooded once in 25 years, a, few, a foot or two of water. Well, these systems are installed along the lake shore, but above the water level, as long as there is space available. And it's, so you can take marginal wetlands. DEC has to approve it, environmental folks. But the idea that New York State is promoting is use those old abandoned landfill sites, uh, CND sites, brownfield sites. There was a factory. Then oil spill, they're gone out of business, there is a 10 acre lot sitting there and nobody using the building because there is some soil contamination. Solar panel is a perfect solution to put it up, cover it up, put it in, into the grid. One point I don't think you maybe told people that they might be interested in knowing is like, with your systems there's a certain shadow that they get so you, if you're having multiple rows, it, you have to stage them so far apart. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they get the idea maybe the, you know, how, what kind of area this may encompass. If you, you know, it's one thing if it's a straight one row yep. line, but if you're putting multiple rows, you know, there is a certain distance to put them apart. Yeah, that's most important. You don't want the shadow to obstruct. If there are trees which are not that tall right now, but someday could be, you got to plan for some trimming and make sure it doesn't create a shadow later on. Yes. You can use them, I I think they want to record uh, the, it. Yes. The, uh, you, existing houses that we have, is the roof structure strong enough to support these uh, uh, cells? Most of the codes require the roofing to be designed for snow loads. So we're designed for five feet of snow, some kind of a safety factor. So most likely it is. But the installer would check the your framing make sure the spacing between the rafters, and make sure that it's spread. A lot of time, you have a new roof, and you don't want it to be warranty to be affected by drilling into it. So they have systems that have less impact and don't use a drilling method, but ballast method to hold it there. 
So this is really part of the installer. That's what they they have to earn their living. That analyze my situation. How much can I be putting it? Yes. Somebody's getting a lot of walking <laughs> to do. Rob, if, if a new community were being built, let's say 50 houses, and that group of people, they knew what they are, but they want to be um, producing their own power. So they can, they can do the wind remotely, right, and have the power come back to that, or the credits come back to their community. Is that right? And can they do the same thing with solar? Or if they had a, an acre dedicated only to solar production within that community? Well, the community system, this is more for individual consumer who has history of usage. So a new community, you haven't built it yet. You don't have electric bills. So it would be once it is built, you can plan to have it that way. You can plan to have it, but there are legal questions whether NYSERDA will give you the grant before the homes are built. It's really meant to replace existing usage. They call it distributed generation. Why don't we generate where there is a power demand, right where the people are, where the user are, rather than making it in one place and taking it all the way? So most of it is being, you're know, placing existing demand, but on as far as doing a project with solar in mind, there are folks in Oregon, they're designing subdivisions called net zero in energy independent. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, are there pluses and minuses between a roof installation and a ground installation? Obviously, the shade from trees would affect a ground installation more than a roof. Mm -hmm. But uh, things like uh, wind loading, um, cost of installation, things like that, is there a significant difference between a roof installation and a ground installation? Ground is a little bit more, but not a, a huge difference. But there is certainly lower cost when you can just put it flush mount to this sloping roof. But if you have a flat roof, which some larger commercial buildings have, then you can put the same solar panels at an angle facing south. So the, yes, it's cheaper, but then you need to analyze the situation. Yeah, to Tony said nobody can leave till 8.30 because that's what it said in the program. <laughs> um, one individual asked about solar panels and charging, I think it was you, electric car. In Rochester, and I've run through the numbers, a solar panel like this, a 265 to 270 watt panel with a south exposure in Rochester will provide enough energy to drive an electric car a thousand miles per year. So if you figure for a car, if you had a 10,000 mile annual usage, 10 panels would do all of the energy to drive that car annually. Yep. There's a charging station here, powered by local power here outside the town hall. There are grants available for charging stations, but I, you know, you go to California, you see solar panels and charging station going together, uh, because there is so much of uh, traffic and air quality is a big issue there. EVs have no air quality issue. I mean, I love it. Whenever you go to a place, parking lot. The closest to the building is the charging station. So when I go to RIT, I have a space to park the car and I don't have to look for parking. But lately, a few professors got it, so I was kicked out. <laughs> there was not enough room. Yes. The city of Rochester has a, has a number of charging stations that they don't charge the park, people to yeah. park to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, all around Rochester. It's complimentary. And they're, they're offering it free for a year, yeah. perhaps extended. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one thing I um, should point out for people that don't know in Penfield, we have two small solar PV systems. One was put in a couple of years ago at a pump station off of Creek Street, and that provides 100% of the power annually for the pump station. 
And then in the last year, it was this spring, um, a system was put in at Harris Whalen Lodge that provides about 40% of the power for the lodge there. And both of those took advantage of the NYSERDA uh, dollars incentives for uh, both of those projects. So I just wanted to let people Thanks, know Bob. that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's a hands-on Bob Canauer building solar systems, wind system, whatever. So he's got a lot of field knowledge. But town has been doing step by step, getting into it. So pump stations, these are wastewater pump stations out somewhere, they need to be working otherwise, if a power failure or whatever. So having a, a remotely operated system, some charging system, battery charging with, with it, makes it a lot more dependable. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your taking the time. Have a good evening.